Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Tea Time with Mon. I hope you guys are having a good day. Yay! We're almost getting to the weekend. You guys know me. I love the weekend. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, today's topic is be kind, but don't let people abuse of that kindness. You know that meme that says, don't mistake my kindness for weakness. I think that's something that when you have, you naturally have a kind heart, you have to keep reminding yourself over and over again. Um, the other day I was talking to my mom and I, I don't even know why the conversation came up, but um, <clears throat> we were reminiscing back in the 80s when, you know, I was a child growing up in the 80s and we were very well off. My dad has always been a very wealthy man. He uh, opened up his own business and he's just a very smart man. And um, we were really well off. And my dad has always, I came out like my dad. I'm very giving. I'm uh, very kind. And I love to do for other people, you know, what maybe they can't um, do themselves. Um, when I was growing up, my dad was very giving and people abused of his kindness. Um, I would always observe my dad inviting everyone out to dinner and paying for everyone. And, you know, he got the tab all the time. Okay. He had the tab all the time. <clears throat> and, you know, as Seeing my dad as an example, I grew up the same way. Like, you know, when uh, when I was already on my own and I made my own money and I was working and I would go out with my friends and stuff like that. Every time my friends were broke, I'll be like, no worries. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I'll buy your meal. I'll pay your way. Wherever we were going, I didn't mind. Money has never been an issue to me. I, I've never been stingy. I, if I have it, I love to give. I love to help others. So I was always, you know, just there to pull through for anybody who needed me to pull through for them. So yeah, I came out like my dad. My dad's always been that way. I remember we would go on trips to Disney and there was this one time that my dad had planned a trip to Disney and my friends wanted to go so bad and we were, they were over at my house, a few of my friends, I think it was about three or four girls. Uh, we were having like a little pool party and my dad was talking about Disney World and that we were going to go take a trip to Disney World and over the weekend and this and that. And the girls were all excited like, oh, you're so lucky. I wish I wish I could go. You get to go to Disney so much. Your parents always take you this and that. And my dad felt bad. So my dad's like, you girls want to go? And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> And the girls were all excited, They're like, yeah, but I don't know if my mom and this and money. And my dad's like, no, 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 you don't have to pay for anything. I'll pay your way. I'll pay your hotel, your entrance and everything. Well, you know, their parents let them go <clears throat> and they all went with us. And my dad was just like that. And I grew up the same way. If I had, I didn't hold back. If I had and one of my friends didn't, I'll be like, I got you, girl. I got you covered. I'll pay your way. Whatever. Okay, well. The point of all this is, since I came from a family that, you know, we were well off in the 80s. Like, you know, my dad was really well off. We never struggled, ever. Um, I think people took advantage of our kindness. They spotted us as, ooh, they have the good parties. They have the lifestyle, you know. And I'm not saying we were rich, but, you know, we were, my dad was wealthy. My dad was well off in the 80s. I'm talking about the 80s, okay? We were good. I mean, I think my parents struggled when I was a baby. My mom used to work in a factory, and my dad still hadn't opened his business yet. My dad was working for a window company, and he was washing dishes in a, in a restaurant at night just to make ends meet. And one day my dad taught himself. He was like, you know what? He observed everything he learned as a worker in the window company. And he opened up his own window company. Until this day, my dad's business has been open for over 40 years. My dad started the business a year after I was born. I think 1976. So I'm 43. The business is 44 years old and still going strong. Yes, you know, 
we went through a recession. You know, there are moments that things are not like they were back in the 80s, obviously, and they never will be. But it's still standing. It has struggled a lot when things got bad with the economy, but it's still standing. So yes, my dad made something of himself and people saw this. And a lot of people, you know, got jealous, got envious, you know, because we had a good lifestyle and everything. And my dad was always taking us out to trips. You know, it was Disney World every other month or whatever, you know. And we traveled a lot. We went to a lot of places. Um, every weekend, we were at a different restaurant eating dinner. I mean, we lived a good life. And I think a lot of people observed this and wanted to mooch off us. So the, there was this lady that my mom met during that time. This person is not no longer friends with them or anything, but this was a very long time ago. But I remember, I remember clearly. And that lady, I guess she started to observe that, you know, and I think the lady was struggling herself. Um, she was uh, going through a period in her life where she was like really struggling and but she also had some bad habits and addictions. I think she used to like to drink a lot. She was, uh, she wasn't really, she didn't really show much to be an alcoholic, but I think she did have a drinking problem because you could just tell every party that my parents would invite her to, she was the first one drinking, you know? So, but yeah, um, I think that when you are struggling in your life, you need to put priorities first, you know, and alcohol is not important obviously this lady probably blew her money off on a lot of stuff and most of the time she was off in the street or whatever well the point is this this lady would come around my parents house every time she knew it was either dinner time or that my parents were like throwing some type of um celebration or get together with their friends and stuff like that and my mom started to notice and my mom's like okay because my mom is like <laughs> She's, I think I came out like her in that sense where, okay, I love people. I love getting together with friends. I love parties. and I, But there are times where I need my space, okay? I need, whoa, you know? Give me my space to breathe. And I'm not always going to want to have somebody by me 24 7 just there like what are you doing with your life what do you want from me are you trying to mooch off me because like really it's starting to show you know and my mom started to notice this and my mom started to cut her off because my mom's like you know what this lady only comes around she never she never offers us anything what do people give us they don't give us crap all they do is use us and take from us <clears throat> so my mom started to cut her off because my mom's like people mistake our kindness for weakness okay it's good to be kind it's good to be good to others but you have to draw the line somewhere like somewhere you have to say okay enough is enough you're kind of abusing a little bit of my kindness okay if i didn't invite you why are you showing up at my house why are you showing up around dinner time look and i always say this i don't neglect or deny sorry i don't deny anyone a plate of food but don't abuse of my kindness, okay? My house ain't a restaurant. My house is not a restaurant. Just because people see that I have friends over every weekend and we get together for celebrations or special things and, you know, I, I cook dinner for all of us, don't get it twisted, okay? I don't have my friends over every weekend because just to come eat food. There are weekends we get together and we just watch movies or we play games. It doesn't always have to be about food, you get me? And that's one thing that I learned from my mom because my mom, when she drew the line, she was done. She was like, okay, enough is enough. You could be kind, but don't let people abuse of you, okay? There's a difference and you have to draw that line, you guys. You have to draw that line because some people have no shame. They have no dignity whatsoever, okay? They'll be sitting there right in front of your face and you're like looking at them like, okay, now it's time to go. What are you, what are you waiting for? For me to invite you over for dinner? It ain't going to happen. Okay. I'm kind enough to invite you often to like parties and celebrations and this and that. So what? You're going to extend <laughs> your welcome 
nah. So yeah, it was funny that my mom mentioned that the other day and she was talking about that. And I don't know why we were reminiscing about the, <laughs> I think we were talking about the, <clears throat> the 80s and the good times that we lived back then and everything. And somehow that conversation came up and I was like, you know what? My mom is right. This makes for a good tea time because I myself have over the years learned that people do want to mooch off you. People do abuse of your kindness and people don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I've always been that way. I'm the type of person that, Hey, I'll be kind, but I draw the line somewhere and Oh my God, don't suffocate me. I need my space, okay? I need my space. If I invite you, great. But don't be sure. As a matter of fact, I don't open the door to anyone who shows up in my house unannounced. Sorry. No, I'm not having it, okay? That's rude and that's uncalled for. Um, but yeah, don't be showing up unexpectedly. Trying to make it look like, oh, you know, I just want to chat or whatever, this and that. No, honey, you're trying to mooch off me. You're trying to see if I invite you over for dinner or lunch or whatever, and I'm not having it. I'm not having it more than what I've given to people, and I get nothing in return, and I don't do anything to receive anything in return. I do it out of the kindness of my heart because that's how I am. I'm very giving, and I love to host, and I love to cook for others, and I love it. I enjoy it, but don't abuse of it. Don't abuse of it because I'm not a restaurant. I'm not a hotel. Okay. <laughs> I'm not any of those things. Okay. I'm a friend. I'm a true friend that will be there for you and will have your back. But don't abuse of my kindness because in the long run, I sit down here and I think out of all the people that I give, give, give to, who gives back? Who gives back? I could sit here. And literally tell you guys that there are people who will not do for you what you do for them. Ever. My dad, and, and my mom always tells me this. She's like, unfortunately, we've you've had the same bad luck that your dad and I have had with people and friends. My dad had a lot of friends that he did stuff for. He invited them. They were always on all of my dad's parties and celebrations and stuff. Did they ever bother to invite my dad to their house for a party, a celebration, even a small little dinner? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your friendship. <clears throat> Anything. Nope, ever. And that's one of the things that David and I struggle with all the time. Not once. We could count the small amount of people and so-called friends that have ever invited us to their house. To return the favor. Hey, come chill with us. Let's have a little barbecue. Let's do dinner. Whatever. People like that are hard to find. Very hard. So yeah, don't be kind, but don't let anyone abuse of that kindness. Because... Mm -mm. You got to draw the line somewhere. You got to make people respect you. If they ain't going to respect you, you make them respect you. Okay? Because, no, I don't play that. Seeing what happened to my parents over the years growing up as a child, I didn't see it. I heard my mom bitching about it a lot, but I didn't really realize it till now that I'm a grown-up and a grown adult. And I'm like, wow, my parents had that done to them a lot. Wow. People knew that my dad was well off. People knew that they lived a good life, you know, all the time, pool parties and barbecues and celebrations and trips and people wanted to mooch off. Let me come around, see if they ask me to stay for dinner. No, honey, if you're struggling because you're drunk and you have uh, an addiction, then that's your problem. I could understand if somebody's struggling, really some misfortune, misfortune happened to them, then okay, help them. But nah, because you want to give into an addiction and you're broke and you're in the street and now you want to come around to see if somebody invites you for dinner. I don't play that. Anyway, you guys, I hope this tea time helps you. And as always, stay tuned for more. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.